The Western, in all of its forms, has been one of the most successful genres in the history of cinema. From its early beginnings in silent film to its surge in popularity through the 40s and 50s, like every genre, it has evolved throughout time, adapting to changes in culture and cinematic influences. What I'm talking about today, though, is the one thing, or really set of things, that binds all Westerns together. Iconography. The term originated in the world of Renaissance art, but icons are everywhere and have proven to be an essential tool in analysing and identifying film genre. Essentially, an icon is a symbol that can be recognised across a range of artworks, in this case films. An icon can take on any kind of meaning depending on how it's used, but it is symbolic because of this widespread use. In genre film, this can be an object, a character archetype, a stylistic trait, or even a star. Think of a western and you immediately think of cowboy hats, horses, wagons, tumbleweeds and pistols. You think of Monument Valley, a frontier town with a saloon, a lone gunslinger or a lawman fighting for justice. You think of John Wayne and Gary Cooper. Or maybe you think of Clint Eastwood, but we'll come back to that. The American Hollywood western is rooted in American history, but a rather idealised version of it. With a few exceptions, up until the 60s, the Western's iconographic features served the same purpose. The hero follows a moral code and fights on the side of justice, usually defending a town or a homestead. The production and costume design represent a growing society. A church symbolises a place of community and civilization. The heroes are clean cut and the bad guys are easily identifiable. This was the norm until around the 60s, as the genre started to decrease in popularity and take a darker turn. This is where we meet an Italian gentleman by the name of Bob Robertson, I mean Sergio Leone. A student of the neorealism movement, Leone spent much of the 1950s working as an assistant on a number of epics shot at the Cinecitta Studios in Rome. But in 1964, when he directed A Fistful of Dollars and popularised what we now know as the Spaghetti Western, he changed the genre forever. Contrary to the belief of American critics at the time, Leone was extremely knowledgeable about the American West and had more on his mind than mindless schlocky parody when he was making the Dollars trilogy. Leone's films are a direct rejection of the classical mode of Hollywood filmmaking, narratively and stylistically. His view of the West is far more pessimistic. Despite being set in the US, they are deeply rooted in European culture. Italy was still wounded from the Second World War. Leone has seen empires burn and knows how cruel mankind can be. A Fistful of Dollars and Leone's subsequent films are an effort to demythologize the American Western by taking the icons we know and dirtying them up in his own sandbox to show a darker and grittier version of the West. The town is depressing and barren. Leone personally stained all the costumes to make them feel dirty and lived in. The setting is a lawless town near the Mexican border. The story focuses on two rival gangs, but instead of good versus evil, it's evil versus really evil. Nobody fights with honour and the violence is excessive. It's not used as a solution to a conflict, but simply a means to an end for the characters. The noose, a western icon with a thousand meanings, looms at the entrance of the town as a harbinger of all the death that is to follow. This brings us to our hero, or should I say anti-hero. Leone's gunslinger does not fight to protect the landscape. He simply moves through it in the pursuit of nothing more than money. He somewhat shares the melancholy nature of the Hollywood gunslinger, but he is mischievous in his trickery and almost seems to enjoy it at times. He is the hero simply because he is more moral than everyone else he meets. He eventually rescues Marisol, but only after he has reaped all the money he can from the town's respective gangs. A scene that really encapsulates what Leone is trying to do is the graveyard shootout. It's dark and it's messy, there's no defined hero and villain, there's no respect or honour involved. It's two gangs who have been tricked into a fight by the hero while he's off poking around looking for money. Even during the massacre at the end, the hero merely watches on at all the carnage he's set loose. The religious imagery and the use of the graveyard is repurposed as a symbol of death and the cheapness of human life. Get three coffins ready. All the recognisable icons are here, but they have morphed into something completely different. Death and the pursuit of wealth are two extremely prevalent parts of the DNA of Sergio Leone's films, with a focus on individuality rather than one's responsibility to the community and the land. In his deconstruction of the stylistic and narrative icons of the classic western, he has created a new iconography, a new myth. His cool, squinting gunslinger, his aggressive close-ups and zooms, his exaggerated violence have all gone on to influence the Western genre just as much as the Hollywood Westerns of old. This is the power of the icon, as the one through line that can be used to trace the evolution of a genre throughout history. So yeah, when I think about a Western, I think of Clint Eastwood. <laughs>